How's it going everyone? Happy New Year. Hope you all have a great 2023. To start off this year, I'm going to go over my top five poker rooms that I personally visited and played in in 2022. Last year in 2022, I played in over 20 poker rooms across the country. It's a little bit less than what I have played in uh, previous years, but I'm going to try to only focus on the ones that I visited last year. So let's get started. Now, before we start, I will say that there might be a slight bias in some of these rooms because some of the rooms I play in more often than other rooms, but that's all part of the experience and that's partly what I'm going to be basing my decision off of. So number five on the list is Seminole Hard Rock Hollywood in South Florida. It's about 30 minutes north of Miami, 30 minutes south of Fort Lauderdale. This is one of the premier largest poker destinations and poker venues in North America. Tony Burns runs the show there. He's the uh, head of poker marketing there, former tournament director there. Uh, he does a great job. He brings in tournament directors from all over the country. And Seminole has tournament series running year round, which makes it the perfect poker destination. Uh, in 2023, it's gonna be probably even better. They just have so many options. The cash game area has 40 to 45 tables all stakes it's a really beautiful room and then the tournament area is on the other side it's huge they, i don't know how many tables they have but it feels like when you walk in they have 80 to 100 tables set up that might be more than what they actually have but it, it's huge seminole hard rock also has a very cool guitar hotel they're actually going to be building one in the las vegas strip as well but um, it's really cool if you've never been there. Uh, it is a little bit pricey. Something that I've noticed, um, though, is that the Airbnb market and surrounding area seems to be one of the cheaper Airbnb markets around the country. Um, I've always been able to find a very affordable, sizable Airbnb not too far away. You can get one with a swimming pool in the backyard. Again, you're not too far away from the beach, too, so bring your swimming uh, trunks. And... Um, you know, it's great for a group of friends to, to travel to as well. If you're going to go with the Airbnb route, super affordable. Um, this is also an 18 and up casino. So you have a lot of 18 and 19 year olds punting off in the cash games, which also makes it great. Just something else to consider. Anyways, Seminole Hard Rock is a great place to play, guys. That's number five on my list. Number four on my list of top five poker rooms from 2022 to play in in 2023 is one that you might not have heard of, and that's because they have only hosted one tournament series so far. It is Grayton Resort and Casino in Northern California. It's an hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and it's also in wine country. This is a premier spot because there is a lot of money in the Bay Area. Also, a lot of the major tournament previous tournament uh, venues in the Bay Area, like Bay 101, who hosted the WPT Shooting Star, is not currently hosting tournaments. So you got the entire Bay Area tournament market going to Grayton. The reason why you probably haven't heard of Grayton yet is because they've only been around for about seven or eight years, I think. And when they first opened up, there was like a county probation or something like that, that they had to follow where they weren't allowed to host like large tournaments or whatever. That probation has finally expired last year. They hosted the Run Good Poker Tour series in September. It was a 200,000 guarantee, $600 buy-in. They smashed it. It was over half a million dollars. The setup there is awesome. They were, it was very spacious. Um, they had about 35 tables, I think, set up just in the tournament area, but they could have easily fit 40 to 50, I think. Um, they also have about 20 tables in the cash game area. They've always had cash games running since they opened, and the games have been pretty good. Uh, Staff-wise, they brought in Jordan Cutter. Uh, he's one of the top traveling tournament directors in the country, and Jordan brought in a lot of his dealers from, that travel with him, so staff was top point. Greg Steinmetz is the uh, poker room manager there, so he also helped organize there, and... I think that there's going to be some big tournaments coming up this year in 2023 at Grayton. We already know that the Run Good Poker Series is going to go back there, I think, in March 
we're still waiting to see the schedule. Usually that's a $600 main event. If Grain hosts something big, and I think they have the potential to really take a large portion of Northern California's uh, tournament market, if they host like the WPT, I think this is a great spot for the WPT. By the way, I believe this is now the largest casino in California uh, by square foot. The tournaments are gonna be worth it if they start hosting some big ones. So keep a lookout for Graydon Casino in California. Number three on my list, this one is a surprise. This one is like the Cinderella on the list because I didn't expect it to be such a great, awesome venue or experience when I went there, but I'm talking about the Pepper Mill in Reno. This is a smaller, medium-sized tournament venue area. They've already have been known for hosting some pretty good cash games year-round, but they don't host a lot of tournaments year-round, um, and that's one of the reasons why you might not have heard of this one. They hosted the Pepper Mill Palooza in October. They're going to be hosting it again in April of 2020, of 2023. And um, it was about an $800 main event. They also had a bunch of $500 buy-ins and some, some lower buy-ins. They did a really nice job with the setup. Their cash game area has about 15 to 20 tables. Again, they already are known for having good cash games year round. And the tournament area had about 35 to 40 tables set up, I would say, um, in a nice room. Um, the poker room manager and tournament director is Mike Nelson. The field is very friendly. Um, they like to splash around. I had a lot of fun. The staff was really friendly. Mike was also very cool with letting me vlog as long as um, I got permission from him first, which I did. And uh, he was really cool about that. So I'm definitely looking forward to go back to the Pepper Mill in 2023. One of the only minor setbacks, and it's not really a setback, is the geographical location of the Pepper Mill makes it a little bit harder to travel to. If you're coming from California, you're gonna have to drive through the mountains. And if you're flying in from out of state or something, it's a small airport. Weather conditions could also be a concern um, if it's snowing and stuff like that. This is not a venue that's gonna get massive, huge prize pools like in Florida, Vegas, or in LA, but, um, the one thing that I think makes up for that is the fact that the Pepper Mill really shows their appreciation for their players. They honored all of their guarantees. The WSOP kind of screwed them over by overlapping the WSOP circuit in Lake Tahoe at the same exact dates as their Pepper Mill Palooza event. And they're competing for the same market. They're about an hour away from each other. The Pepper Mill fell short on a lot of their guarantees, but they honored all of them. And so to me, that's a big deal. Um, it shows that they are serious about what they do and they, they are serious about caring about their players. So I'll definitely be back at the Pepper Mill in 2023. All right, number two and number one on my list are very, very close. And I admit there might be a little bit of a bias in my decision because we'll, we'll get to that later. Number two is the win resorts in Las Vegas. Technically their poker operations are set up on the encore side, but everyone calls it the win anyways. The win has always been a top notch tournament venue. It's, it's, I mean, it's the win. It's the best. It's one of the most luxurious resorts in Las Vegas. We have a lot of whales, rich loaded whales, just punting in the cash games. But the tournament area this year is what really sets them apart. They hosted the World Poker Tour World Championships in December. According to Matt Savage, they had up to 138 tournament tables for the WPT Prime Championship. That's a lot of tables. And the venue was pretty well organized as, as, as well as it could have been for that amount of players. I mean, I understand that the wait to get seated for alternates was ridiculous, but it's no different at the WSOP. I think the WPT handled it much better than the WSOP. And um, you can just really tell that they appreciate their players as well. And that's a huge plus for me. The win is still going to be one of the best locations to play poker in in Las Vegas and in the world uh, moving forward. And I don't think there's anything that can really change that right now. They're, they're just on another level. And that brings us to, drum roll, number one. Okay, 
I did say that there might be a little bit of a bias here, but number one is Thunder Valley Casino and Resort in Northern California near Sacramento. It is my home tournament casino, so I do play there more than I play anywhere else. That's kind of what, where the bias is. Obviously, when you play at a certain venue a lot, the staff and everyone is gonna get to know you and be more friendly uh, with you. So, but that's a huge plus, you know? Um, and also I'm familiar with the player pool there. Um, so it's just like positive vibes there. But on top of all of that, Ben Irwin is the tournament director there. He has done everything you possibly can do um, to make this a premier venue worth traveling for. They host tournaments, um, all different buy-ins year round. Uh, in January, they got their own small New Year's Champagne Series, the buy-ins a 600 main event. Right after that, they had the World Series circuit coming in with a high roller of 3,200 and 1,700. They got the WPT Rolling Thunder, which is probably a 3,500 or 5K. And they have a whole bunch of tournaments running year round. So all different buying levels. It's easy to fly into Sacramento. Um, it's pretty affordable uh, for a nice resort compared to some the prices that you would pay at, at other resorts that are just as nice. And um, the staff, they just do everything they can. And Ben Irwin is really well, top-notch, well-trained. He brings in tournament directors from across the country, Jordan Cutter, Justin Hammer, Matt Savage, all the big names that you can think of are always there. And they're just, they, they're the best. They, they are, they really are the best. Um, I'm not getting paid to say that. That's just my true feelings on what I think. So check out Thunder Valley if you get a chance to. Um, I, you, you'll be impressed. I haven't heard anything bad about them. Let's just put it that way. All right, so I hope this video might have helped out some of you decide where you might wanna go play poker this year in 2023. If you're looking for a new place to explore and play, uh, these top five on my list are definitely worth checking out. Um, if you're traveling from far away, then I would say the win, Seminole are your two best bets. Um, if you're traveling on the Western Hemisphere, Thunder Valley is great. Grain, I think, has potential to really blow up, so keep an eye out for that one. And if you're looking for a fun, friendly atmosphere, Peppermill Reno is probably a great choice. There's also a lot of like things you can do, outdoor activities around Peppermill, um, hiking, fishing, and all that stuff. So these are all great venues. Hope you enjoy the video. Um, drop in the comments where you think I should play because obviously there's going to be people saying, well, you should have played here or this one's definitely better than this one. Again, this video is only on the top five that I played in in 2022 alone. So, um, but I'm definitely down to hear your suggestions.